Welcome back to Untested Builds, where you figure out to play as your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Subscribe and tap the bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. Comment below to suggest characters you want to see on the channel, and join the Patreon to vote in the current poll between Princess Zelda from The Legend of Zelda, John Wick from John Wick, or SpongeBob SquarePants from SpongeBob SquarePants. Patrons also gain early access to build videos, so we actually get them done early, download from the character sheet archive, and can commission builds from me directly. Today we're stepping into a different type of horror and building a Yaucha, specifically a blooded clan hunter or more colloquially known by humans at least as a predator. For our goals for this build we've got some alien physiology to take care of, strength, endurance, reaction time, speed, resiliency, pretty standard stuff to be honest. Second, we've got some not so standard equipment, a visor that lets us see an infrared, more infrared, couldn't find a straight answer on that one. And also more lasers, swords, knives, bombs, nets, and staffs than even a Wetworks field team can be prepared for. And last, none of that matters unless you've got the skills to handle them. Being out on a hunt alone means you've already proved yourself against the most dangerous prey in the galaxy, whether through skill, cunning, or raw power, or some combination of all three. For our stats, we're starting with 18 strength. Our weapons are all ranged or finesse, but we toss around actual Mr. Olympia, usually with only one hand. 14 dexterity, uh, all of our weapons are ranged or finesse. 14 constitution, being able to bleed means being able to die. Doesn't mean it'll be easy though. 12 intelligence, we can operate spaceships, but also get outsmarted by 21st century humans. And 10 wisdom and charisma. We're supposed to be one of the most intimidating and skillful trackers in the universe, but we can work on that as we level. For our skills, we're legendary in athletics, nature, and stealth. Call it the brute hidden in the leaves package. Expert survival, technically this should be higher, but it won't really matter by the end of this. And training in all of these things, like any functioning member of a clan should be. There's a lot of ancestries that get a lot of what we need for a Yacha, but we're going with Knoll since they're renowned hunters in their own right. Specifically a Gonzi Knoll for a few more options. At the start of each day, we gain resistance equal to half of our level against either acid electricity or sonic damage chosen at random. And we gain a plus one circumstance bonus to saving throws against any effect that would inflict the controlled condition. We also gain low light vision along with a bite unarmed attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage. And we'll take the name bearer background since we're already blooded and have our clan name. Gaining training in athletics and our clan's lore along with the combat climber feat so we aren't flat footed while climbing and can climb with a hand occupied. For our ancestry feat, Irrepressible gives us the critical success results whenever we pass an emotion or fear effect. There's only one race that we fear, and they're long gone. Yaucha are the quintessential hunters, no need to change the formula that works. We gain the hunt prey action to designate an enemy we're aware of or tracking, and gain a plus two circumstance bonus to perception checks to seek and survival checks to track them until we designate a new prey or until the start of the next day. We're going out with Edge for the plus two bonus to stealth and recon knowledge checks against our prey, but we also get that bonus to deception and intimidation checks along with a plus one AC bonus against their attacks against us. But honestly, any ranger's edge is in character. For our class feat, Monster Hunter lets us make a recon knowledge attempt during our hunt prey action and to gain a plus one circumstance bonus on our next attack against our prey on a success, but we can only give this bonus once per day for any specific creature. We'll take the catfall feet so we don't have any trouble dropping from trees or buildings. We tree falls is 10 feet shorter when determining fall damage. And for our class feet, favorite terrain lets us ignore non-magical difficult terrain in a terrain type of our choice. And we also gain a specific bonus based on the specific type of terrain we chose. Most predator stories take place in some kind of jungle, so we'll go forest for a climb speed equal to our speed. But you can go for whatever type of terrain is good for your campaign. Or you can retrain it to a different type by spending a week of downtime. Interstellar travel usually takes at least a week, so you'll have the time. Level 3 Rangers gain Iron Will for Expert Will saves. We'll pick up Weapon Proficiency to gain training in an advanced weapon of our choice. We're grabbing the Sawtooth Saber for the lightest, most serrated blade we can find. It's agile and finesse, and it's got twin, meaning our strikes gain a bonus to weapon damage if we've already attacked with another weapon of the same type this turn. So it's really good if you're using two, but if you're climbing or grappling, you obviously can only use one saber at a time. We'll take the Shadow Mark skill feat to give a target a minus two penalty to their perception to notice us whenever we attempt to avoid notice while following them. They also take the same penalty to their initiative roll if an encounter begins while we're tailing them. For our class feat, we're not going pure ranger here. The Red Manus Assassin dedication gives us training in assassin lore and increases our stealth proficiency to expert. And also, whenever we gain expert or greater proficiency in any weapon, we also gain that proficiency in our Sawtooth Sabers. Which is convenient because level 5 rangers gain weapon expertise for expert proficiency in simple and martial weapons. Unfortunately, we don't gain the critical specialization effects of the Sawtooth Saber since it's still an advanced weapon for us. 
but we can gain the critical specialization effects of a backpack ballista for our shoulder cannon, immobilizing a target against an adjacent wall on a crit. We get trackless steps, so we always gain the benefit of covering our tracks while in natural terrain, even while moving at full speed. And for our ancestry feat, right hand blood is probably half the reason we went null. We can deal ourselves one damage to spill our own blood to administer first aid, or take 2d8 damage to treat wounds or treat disease, bypassing the need for healer's tools and gaining a plus one circumstance bonus on the check. Gaucha blood is able to partially neutralize the corrosive effects of xenomorph blood, hence the use of it in the coming of age blood ritual even if it doesn't technically heal wounds immediately. We'll pick up natural medicine to use our nature skill in place of medicine for treat wounds checks. And if we have access to fresh natural ingredients, we also gain a plus two circumstance bonus to the check. It doesn't really get fresher than blood straight from the vein, assuming Yaucha actually have veins. For our class feat, Red Mantis Magic lets us prepare two cantrips and a first level spell. Bullhorn lets us yell really loud, giving us a plus one status bonus to coerce checks for 10 minutes, among other things. Message opens up the comms with any nearby predators, sending a string of words to a creature within 120 feet, and they can respond using a reaction or a free action on their turn. And Long Strider for a plus 10 foot status bonus to speed for an hour. Level 7 Rangers gain Vigilant Senses for Master Perception Proficiency, Weapon Specialization for an extra flat 2 damage on our expert weapon attacks, and Evasion for Master Reflex Saves and Critical Success Results on Regular Successes. We'll take Incredible Initiative for a plus 2 circumstance bonus to all initiative rolls, but rarely caught out of our depth and caught off guard even less often. Experience Tracker lets us track at our full movement speed by taking a minus 5 penalty to the survival check. And for our class feat, Advanced Red Mantis Magic gives us a second and third level spell slot. We've got Invisibility to become undetected for 10 minutes or until we make a hostile action. Haste is probably the best third level spell on the Red Mantis list, but we're going with Jump, which lets us make 30 foot leaps in a single action in any direction for one minute. Level 9 Rangers gain Ranger expertise for Expert Ranger Class DC and Nature's Edge, so enemies in natural difficult terrain are always flat footed to us. There's nothing more invigorating than finding worthy prey. Glory and Valor lets us spin an action, and for the next minute or until we critically fail a strike, whenever we successfully strike a creature our level or higher, we regain hit points equal to half of our level. Level 10 Red Mantis Mages gain a 4th level spell slot. 4th level Invisibility keeps our active camo on during fights. The spell no longer ends when we make a hostile action, but the duration is reduced to only 1 minute. The Wilderness Spotter feat gives us even more bonuses while we're in our favorite terrain. We can use our Survival in place of Perception for initiative and to notice traps, but our Perception is actually better. We're actually taking this because we can use Survival in place of Thievery to disable traps we come across in our chosen terrain since we don't have Thievery training at all. Actually, maybe that's not so in character. Failing to avoid a trap is usually the only way humans even stand a chance against us. For our class feat, Master Monster Hunter lets us use our nature skill to recall knowledge to identify any creature, and we gain our Monster Hunter bonuses on regular successes in addition to critical successes. Before this, our best knowledge skill against Xenomorphs was probably occultism, and humans are usually under society. Now they're all under nature. After all, they're both just animals to us. Level 11 Rangers gain medium armor expertise for expert light and medium armor and unarmored defense. There's a lot of different armor options out there, but we're just doing some recreational hunting, not wading into war. So scale mail will be more than sufficient. We also get Juggernaut to increase our fortitude saves to master, and we gain critical success results on regular successes, and Wild Stride so we can ignore non-magical difficult terrain, and treat greater difficult terrain as regular terrain. We'll take the fast recovery feat to regain twice the usual hit points from resting and recover from diseases and poisons more quickly from successful 4 to 2 saves thanks to our superior physiology. We'll take the Titan Wrestler feat to grapple, disarm, shove, and trip creatures up to two sizes larger than us and up to three sizes larger once we're legendary in athletics. Xenomorph queens get pretty big when left to their own devices. Predator 2 took a big risk by pitting the titular character against a bunch of LA police officers who were way less equipped than the guys from the first film. But did you know the big guy running between rooftops was also a detective? The detective dedication is how we're getting around our lagging survival abilities. With this, we can use our perception modifier in place of survival to track anything. We also get the wilderness tracker fee for free, which means you've just opened up a skill feat that you can retrain into something else. Maybe go for forger so you don't have to roleplay breaking into a slaughterhouse for food again. Level 13 Rangers gain Weapon Mastery for Master Proficiency in Simple and Martial Weapons, increasing our bonus from Weapon Specialization to 3 along the way. And we'll take Ultra Resistance so we can change our Gonzi resistances as a reaction whenever we take that specific type of damage, so you're never caught completely off guard when the Acid-Blooded Abominations show up. 
will take foil senses to automatically take into account special senses whenever you attempt to avoid notice, hide, or sneak, useful for when you're hunting the actual most dangerous prey, other Yaucha, unless they have sensed the unseen to make undetected creatures in the area merely hidden to you as a reaction to failing a seek check. He may not know exactly where you are, but he knows you're there. Level 15 Rangers gain greater weapon specialization for 6 flat damage on our master weapon attacks, improved evasion for legendary reflex saves, regular fails on crit fails, and a half damage whenever we fail a reflex save, and incredible senses for legendary perception proficiency. And we'll take the toughness feat, mostly for more max HP, but also so we can get back in the fight easier if we do happen to go down with easier recovery checks. The swift sneak feat lets us move at our full movement speed while sneaking, and we can also sneak while using our climbing speed, assuming we're in the right terrain to actually have one. For our class feat, Legendary Hunter doubles the usual attack bonus we gain from Monster Hunter to plus two, so as long as we can pass a nature check, we and our ally marshals can start off combat with effectively legendary attacks. Level 17 Rangers gain Masterful Hunter for Master Ranger Class DC, double the perception and survival bonuses we gain against our Hunter Prey, and increase the bonus to recall knowledge and stealth checks against our Hunter Prey to plus 4, and our AC increase against attacks from our Prey increases to plus 2. For our Ancestry feat, Pack Hunter lets us be a little more effective once it comes time to clear out a Xenomorph Hive with your best buds. We gain a plus 2 circumstance bonus on checks to aid our allies, and our allies gain a plus 2 bonus to checks to aid us. I told you our Hunter's Edge choice wasn't as important. Manifold Edge lets us gain the Hunter's Edge benefit of our choice whenever we use Hunt Prey, so now you can switch it up when you need to. Flurry if you want to dual wield those Sawtooth Sabers, Precision if you're bringing a heavier weapon or ranged option, and Outwit if you actually find a worthy opponent and need some bonuses in the skill department. And for something a bit less impressive, Rapid Mantle allows us to use our much more impressive Athletics modifier in place of our Reflex Save whenever we attempt to grab an edge while falling or jumping. Also, if we succeed, we can pull ourselves up onto that ledge as part of the check. Level 19 Rangers gain Swift Prey to hunt prey as a free action, so long as it's the first action we take on our turn, and Second Skin to gain Master Proficiency in Light and Medium Armor as well as Unarmored Defense, and to not gain the Fatigue Condition whenever we rest in Medium or Light Armor. We'll take the True Perception feed to give us the constant effects of 6 level True Seeing, counteracting illusions we're subject to, and seeing the true form of any polymorph creatures in our sight. For our final skill feat, Legendary Sneak allows us to hide or sneak without the need for cover or concealment, and we also gain the benefit of Avoid Notice during exploration, even when we're using an activity other than Avoiding Notice, so you can spend as much time off screen building suspense as you want. And for our Capstone feat, Superior Sight gives us our iconic helmet, filled with an array of sensory settings, upgrading our low light vision to dark vision, giving us a plus two circumstance bonus to all perception checks and we automatically succeed on the flat check to target any concealed, hidden, or undetected enemies. But now that we're level 20, let's go over the pros and cons of this build. For starters, we're surprisingly hard to take down with 328 HP and our outwit bonuses to AC against our Hunter Prey, invisibility forcing flat checks on enemy attacks even if they know exactly where to attack, and sometimes we even have adaptive resistance to acid, electricity, or sonic damage. We talked a bit about Sawtooth Sabers and Backpack Ballistas, but Net Launchers, Bombs, Spears, Chakram, and Arquebuses are also valid tools of the trade. We just needed the Sabers to get our active camo from Red Mantis Assassin. Speaking of camo, our stealth is unparalleled, especially in a natural environment. Even without counting our invisibility, we can sneak at full speed while covering our tracks in difficult terrain without cover and taking into account special senses, all while actively tracking based on our raw perception and giving our target a penalty to their perception to notice us. For our cons, our most iconic ability is limited to only a few times per day. If you want even more invisibility, you can sub out the Red Manus Assassin feeds and work towards the Advanced Wizard School spell for Illusion for Invisibility Cloak, but Warp Terrain doesn't really fit with the rest of our Hunter Stalker theme. We're also not as good as we can be with ranged weapons since we focused on strength and only took enough decks to hit our armor's dex cap, and it would've felt kinda weird to build a 7 foot tall alien that can chuck grown men as a dex based marshal. Thanks for tuning in to another build, subscribe if you haven't, and join the Patreon if you want to support the channel directly, and to vote between Zelda, John Wick, or Spongebob, and to download this character sheet and more, and until next time, take care, stay safe, and play more Pathfinder.